House Judiciary Chairman Jerry Nadler is planning to authorize a subpoena tomorrow to get access to the full unredacted Mueller report. Of course, at the heart of the case over obstruction is the former FBI director fired by President Trump, James Comey. He led the investigation into alleged links between the Trump campaign and Russia, and he says that he's confused by the bar letter and Mueller's decision to punt on obstruction. Uh, let's go live now to Christian Amanpour. Now, all of this is detailed in his book, A Higher Loyalty, and the paperback version comes out next month. So let us now get some answers from the man himself. The former FBI director, James Comey, joins me here in Washington. Welcome to the program. It's great to be with you. So can I just ask you, because yesterday, which was April Fool's Day, you caused quite a stir, saying and tweeting, I'm in, you know, somebody in the middle needs to get in. I mean, do you need a stress buster? I think we all need to laugh from time to time, especially today. If you don't laugh, you'll cry. And so I just was trying to be fun and prank people on April Fool's Day. Big tradition in the States. Did uh, anybody take you seriously? I don't know for sure. A whole lot of reporters called people trying to reach me to get me to confirm it, blaming their editors <laughs> like they were in on it. Um, you are given to quite dramatic interventions. Right after Mueller uh, dropped his report and we heard the summary, from uh, the Attorney General, you did tweet a, a, a pretty interesting picture of yourself in the woods and you said so many questions. That was more than a week ago. Do you feel you've had those questions answered in any more detail in the intervening days? No. Maybe with the exception of my question about will we get full transparency, I think I see more promising signs of that in the recent letter that the Attorney General sent to Congress. He says that he's going to put it out with some redactions by mid-April. And the thing is, he's also talked about these redactions, and he says that he'll redact secret grand jury testimony, material the intelligence community identifies as potentially compromising sensitive sources and methods, material that could affect other ongoing matters, information that would unduly infringe on the personal privacy and reputational interests of peripheral third parties. Democrats fear that there'll be an attempt to redact issues and, and elements that might damage the president or be uncomfortable for him. From your perspective, do you have confidence that enough of this will come out to satisfy everybody who wants to see it? I can't say for sure until we see it. Those are reasonable concerns for Democrats to have. But Bill Barr, our attorney general, it deserves the benefit of the doubt. Give him a chance to show us what he feels like he can't show us. I have to imagine that former Director Mueller wrote the report with an eye towards it being public someday. So I can't imagine a lot needs to be cut out of it. But let's wait and see. The Attorney General deserves that chance. What is normal redactions in, in cases like this? I mean, you must have seen a lot of this in your, in your ten years, in, in all your positions. I mean, you know, I mean, the jokes are that it'll all be redacted except for a couple of words. You've just said give him the benefit of the doubt. But what should one expect beyond what he's just said? Well, you should expect a good faith effort by the Department of Justice to protect the things that are in those categories. You don't want to reveal classified information. You don't want to damage ongoing investigations. You don't want to smear people who have no real part in the investigation. But that's all fairly easy to figure out if you know the case, as Mueller's people do. And the Democrats promising to subpoena a full unredacted version. Do you think they'll win that? And should they, in Congress, elected officials, be allowed to see it with no redactions? I don't know what would happen in a battle over a subpoena. I do know there's a long tradition of sharing classified sensitive material with the leaders in Congress, chairs of relevant mm -hmm. committees. So it's possible you'll see one version go to most of the House and the public and a more full version go to selected leaders. You've just said the attorney general deserves the benefit of the doubt. I guess, look, where do you come down on the immediate sort of Monday morning quarterbacking or analyzing of the little we know of the Mueller report? There are some who said, well, you know, he punted. We don't know what's going on. There are others who say, uh, you know, the, the attorney general took that, that, that summary of his and scored, quote, a touchdown for the president. What should we make of the fallout in the few days since the report has been, you know, delivered to the Justice Department? Well, Monday morning quarterbacking, to borrow your term, is a natural thing. There's been a whole lot of it done about decisions I've made. I think what we have to do is just keep an open mind and wait for the details. 
the Attorney General has to not only share details with the American people of the case, but show us his work. Why did you make the decisions you made? Why did you handle it the way that you did? I'm confident he understands that. He is an institutionalist. He loves the Department of Justice. The only thing he has to lose at this point in his career is his reputation. I think he deserves the benefit of the doubt and us, uncharacteristically, showing some patience to give him a chance to show us. I mean, you worked for Robert Mueller. He's a big presence in your life. I think once or you may have called him your mentor, his men him your mentor. Do, were you surprised by what we know of what he came down with on the conspiracy and on the obstruction of justice? Let's take the conspiracy first, where he said he could not establish any, he didn't use the word collusion, I don't believe, but conspiracy or crime in that regard. Yes, I, again, all I know is from the Attorney yeah. General's letter that he could not, the evidence did not establish a conspiracy, and he defines conspiracy as a tacit or express agreement between an American and the Russians. It doesn't surprise me. I, I didn't know what the result was going to be. That's the reason we were investigating it when I got fired. I didn't know where it would end up. I'm confident that if he reached that conclusion, it's reached in good faith. But I'll be very interested, as all of us will, to see the details of that. You have said because many, including the president, called this for a long time a witch hunt, a hoax, and all the rest of it. To those of his supporters who might say, look, it amounted to a hill of beans, what we know so far, this should never have happened. What's your answer to that? Two things. First, take a look in the mirror and ask what happened to Bob Mueller and the FBI being corrupt and evil and a nest of deep state traitors that they reached a conclusion that the president is happy with. Just don't move on from that. Your president tried to burn down the Department of Justice and the FBI, and that matters. So take a look in the mirror and ask you what you've learned from that experience. But second, you should have fired all of us if we didn't investigate what we learned in the summer of 2016, when we got smoke, not fire, but smoke, that Americans might have assisted the Russian effort. We had to investigate that, and no serious person could think otherwise. And it was done in a serious way, and it reached a serious result that now we all ought to get transparency on. So you were, I mean, you started as FBI director the, the investigation into the Russian interference in the election. Um, it started as a counterintelligence investigation, right? Yes. Did you think that it would move into the criminal area? And I guess even on the counterintelligence, how worried were you and do you remain about the threat that Russia continues to pose to democratic institutions, to American elections in the future? It started as a counterintelligence investigation, but every counterintelligence investigation potentially has a criminal element because if you discover someone was working with a foreign adversary to damage the United States, that's an important intelligence finding, but it could also be evidence of a crime, so they run together. And so it was important to do, important to look at, both from what should we know about what the adversary is doing, but also were Americans involved. And remember this. There was a massive effort by the Russians to interfere in this election, to hurt one candidate and to help the other. The good news about what the Attorney General said is that's been verified. There was such a thing. It wasn't a hoax. What we had to figure out starting in the summer of 16 was, are any Americans part of that? And we had good reason to think that. So the counterintelligence investigation had to be done apparently reached important conclusions. I don't know what they say about the continuing threat. Look, Russia succeeded in 2016 beyond its wildest dreams in its effort to damage our democracy, especially. They'll be back, especially given that the president not only hasn't criticized their effort, he's denied it. I saw some poll that a majority of Republicans don't think the Russians intervened in the election in 2016. That's crazy stuff. But that tells the Russian, you'll, Russians, you'll get away with it in 2020, so they will be back. Again, it's almost difficult, it's actually difficult to have a conversation until we know what's in the whole report. Yeah. But I want to ask you this, because you heard many, many commentators, you know, former administration officials, basically accusing the president of potentially being a Russian asset. Now that you've seen the little that you've seen, but the very important nut graphs, can people put that to rest? And is it a good thing that America can see that so far, the evidence suggests, according to Robert Mueller, um, that there wasn't a crime of collusion and conspiracy committed, or at least not enough to establish that? Well, there's two separate pieces to my reaction to that. The first is, yes, it's a very good thing 
that the special counsel appears to have concluded there isn't sufficient evidence to establish that any Americans were part of this effort. I don't care what party you're in. That should be good news to you as an American citizen. That's that question. I don't know what the special counsel's work was with respect to the continuing threat and whether there is some counterintelligence risk associated with this president or this administration and Russia. As I understood his mandate, it was, was there, what do you know about the Russian interference in 2016 or whether Americans were involved? I don't think he looked at the, I'm not suggesting there's something there, but I don't think he looked at the question about, is there something about this president's finances or personal affairs or something that creates a situation where he's reluctant to criticize Russia. I don't think that was his mandate. I don't know the answer to that question. I ask it just because I've been struck during my time as FBI director and struck since about the president's reluctance to criticize Russia, even in private. But I don't know that's a question that's going to be answered by Mueller's work. You think we might never know? We might never know.